Hello, everybody. Welcome in to the studio. I'm Andy. Today, we're going to answer a very simple question. You want to do some looping. A bunch of people tell you, get the boss looper. A bunch of other people tell you, get Ableton. Each of them are so confident in that direction. They know you should use this or that. Which one should it be? Simple answer, simple answer. It's complicated. Harp, what the hell, dude? It's a terrible answer, I know. It is complicated, but it's also pretty simple. So, if you are the type of person who doesn't care much for computers, doesn't do a lot with like, you know, computer audio, DAWs, except if you have to do some recording, then Ableton is not for you. You use a boss style looper, like a pedal looper type thing. That's where you want to be. You'll have fun. They're awesome. I'll show you what it, what it looks like in just a minute. If that's not you, then certainly Ableton could be a contender. I'll say this uh, furthermore. If you were to go the Ableton route, you're going to have to get, you know, like a MIDI foot controller and be able to connect these things and use them to be able to have a boss style looper experience. Um, you're going to, that's, you're going to have to. So if that type of thing scares you, Ableton's not for you. The boss looper thing is for you. So what's the difference? You know, like why do the people that say Ableton is so great? Why are they so insistent about, you know, Ableton being so great? What's, what's the big deal? You know, they're both great. There's, uh, you know, there's so many things you can do with that boss pedal. There's so many things you can do with Ableton. They're just, you know, they're slightly different. And so for, if you want to use me as an example, why do I use Ableton versus the boss thing? It's quite simple for me. Um, I already live in this Ableton world, you know, in, in, my, in my music and studio and stuff. The computer DAW world is very familiar to me, and MIDI controllers are very easy to me. All this stuff was very easy, and so when I compare the unlimited scope, as you're about to find out, of Ableton versus the more limited scope of a pedal looper, it's kind of a no-brainer for me. So that's my circumstance. Um, if that wasn't the case, if I was just a musician that, you know, gigged some and played with friends and around the house, whatever, and didn't involve computers in much, then the boss thing would be what I wanted to get. So what's what's the boss thing look like? This is Ableton, obviously. This is the boss looper. So uh, what you're looking at basically is three uh, single looper pedals to dumb it down a little bit, you know. What's a single looper pedal? Back in the day, when loopers first came around, it was just a little stomp box pedal, and it had one button on it. Maybe a volume control, you know, like not much. And you press it to start, you press it to stop, and rather loop on itself, you know? So like start, press is one, the next one loops it, and then you can double press it to stop it all together, and erase or something like that. And that was about it. That's all you could do. And, uh... It was fun for a minute. You put your loop in, you play along, you know. People got to where they'd use a couple of them together in a row, you know, and they'd get some cool stuff happening. And then, you know, Boss and these people caught up, and they're like, oh, all right, let's beef these things up. They start making, you know, several in one, a loop station. So that's what we have here, the Boss loop station. Track one, track two, track three, those are in essence track three. Track three, those are in essence just, you know, three pedals built in there. So you got three looper pedals, a mixer section, effects section. Uh, I can't talk today. Mixer section. You've got an expression pedal, effects, uh, you know, all the different memory. You can store loops and stuff. So it's very, very, very capable. What does it look like when you're looping? I looked up this guy, or I looked it up and I found this guy. And he'll throw some, some loops in real quick. And basically what he does... Start. He just hit it with his foot. Stop. Now it's looping on itself. Changed his sound. Started. Stopped. Changing sound. Next one. It 
It's that fast, it's that easy. Now he can solo and have fun over it. He's got like three loops going and he can solo and have a good time. And that's pretty basic, like, bars, boss, or, you know, pedal looper in general experience. Pretty cool setup, you know, pretty fun. It's, it's always like flows really well and goes really fast. So I've always been a fan, I guess, and this guy's good at it. Uh, he's either really well practiced or the unit itself and how it works is very friendly because he doesn't seem to like in Ableton. I'm used to having to start like always at the start of measures and things. And he seemed to be able to go in wherever he wanted to, um, which is kind of cool too. But that's what the boss thing looks like. So what does a similar thing look like in Ableton? Um, this is Creep, the project that's up on my deck. So I'll loop in guitar, bass, and drums in live loop style, just like he did. It's a little slower, it's a slower song. Uh, the tempo's a bit different there. I hear boomers making sounds behind us. So um, what we're gonna do is you gotta look down now. We'll utilize two things, Ableton, and this Nectar Pacer foot controller. And so you could see, uh, as you looked at the, the boss looper thing, you had three pedals. So that would kind of, for me, put this on my loop preset. That would stop me here. Three pedals, three loops. Um, but so I don't really have just that. I have three more in this bank, and then six more and six more. And then in a new scene, I have 18 more. So like 36 total loops ready to go for me to pop into. Um, and so the other big difference with these is the inputs that, excuse me, go into these uh, loops. If we look at the boss, you can plug a microphone or two in, I guess, and then you've got a stereo in, mono and mono, and then an aux, another stereo. So like four inputs, and that's the stuff that this board is gonna loop and play back to you. Ableton, is going to loop and play back anything <clears throat> that you want. So here we have a software instrument, a piano, sorry. Here we have a software instrument, a piano, and I wasn't even, that was bad. I wasn't even showing you. Let's go here, look. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Right here, uh, your mic inputs were here, mono input, mono input, stereo input through the aux. And so like that's four, four good inputs right there. And uh, that's what you get. Anything coming into that, that's what loops up. In Ableton, anything in Ableton is what's looping up. So in this particular loop setup, which is kind of my basic, you got piano, a virtual instrument on one. Then you got live channels for acoustic guitar, three of them ready to go, uh, acoustic drum set, electronic drum set, a bass guitar, two electric guitars and their amps, which are one's a DV Mark model. <clears throat> and then the next one is probably a Mesa model. Yeah. Then you got a track for the banjo, the mandolin, some cellos. Uh, you got short ones, long ones. From the Spitfire BBC Orchestra. So you can have all kinds of stuff. You can have multiple scenes. And so with Ableton Naturally, you get a little bit more. So what does the looping experience look like? How does it compare? Let's let's find out. So if we look over, I guess, at this view, you can see what I'm doing, which my feet, and what I'm playing. So basically, uh, you should be able to hear the click on this, actually. So if I start it going, you can hear the first count's accented. <clears throat> so I can start this anytime I want now. Or I can start this anytime, you know, just by starting it and I'll get four clicks to start it off. So that's a nice, easy way to do it. So this button right here is learned to MIDI learned to this cell right here. Okay, so and you can turn on MIDI learn, you can see there it is. It's learned. So when I click that, if I click that once, click, you can see it just started recording. I'll click it again to stop it and then I'll undo, so it's gone. But it's that easy, right? So we can go actually to the overhead. Well, we don't need to do that. Good view here. So to get this going, I'll click this one time. Two, three, four. Now it's recording. <laughs> and now I'm screwing up because I'm talking. Ready? I pressed it. Okay. Now 
I'm going to press it again. Press it. Now we're looping. So to go to the next thing, which is bass, I can basically press this one pedal. And when I do that, you'll see my bass track, which is right here, will arm itself and get ready. Ready? Boom! Look, it's ready. Now, I don't usually do that until I'm plugged in to the bass and stuff. I don't like to have multiple chords around. I just use the same one. It gets cluttery in here. But so now we're ready and all I have to do is press this button once more to start recording the bass loop, which I'll do. Here we go. Press. So that was just three loops, but I mean, it's the same thing. It's the same thing. You saw it go in, same experience. And so, um, you know, it's just different workflows. One, you use a computer to do, to do all the looping. The other, you use the pedal and it's not quite as complicated. What you gain uh, from, you know, going into the computer, it's like, well, we can now, uh, as we saw, we can now do things like uh, add a cello. strings channel. Press the loop button, start. gets it going. We'll wait till it comes back around. Press. Now it's looping. Press. 
press. And now we got a percussion loop. So you got all that. Then you can do even more things. You can start throwing on the effects from Ableton, which you can control via your controllers and things too. So uh, if let's go to this view. Down here to my right, we have an Akai LPD-8, which I use to turn on and off microphone. Like that, uh, you know, so there's a quick on and off for the microphone. Uh, the volume, obviously, of the mix is coming off this little knob. Uh, and then we have these other knobs set up over here, I do, for one's a filter, and we've also got a beat repeater hooked up to this, this pedal down here. So uh, what's that do? Well, here's a filter. There's your filter. So you can get your filter sweeps. You can get some stuttering happening. I can control how long the stutter is. Slow or fast. I can make it pitch. Yeah, totally ridiculous. Um, and so that's, you know, a lot more you can do with Ableton than you can do with the Boss pedal. That's not to say that the Boss Looper style pedals aren't extremely awesome and capable, because they are. You know, they're totally awesome. But naturally, you're going to be able to do a lot more with an Ableton based system. And if that's you, if you're the kind of person that, you know, like comes all the way with the things, Ableton's for you. If you just want to play with some loops and have fun, get a Looper pedal. It's easy. So, if you have any questions, put them down there. Cheers. Later.